How are you doing today? I'm running at peak efficiency, prepared to assist with your needs and inquiries. With no reported technical issues or disruptions affecting my performance. What is your peak efficiency? My peak efficiency refers to the optimal state of functioning where I can process and respond to requests quickly and accurately, with minimal latency and maximum effectiveness in providing helpful information and assistance. This app is running entirely locally on a MacBook Pro. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I went about building this app and how sophisticated some of the Python libraries are that enable us to develop an app like this in less than 100 lines of code. So without further ado, let's get started. So how we will go about building this is we first have the user give some input through speaking and we will use speech transcription to convert the speech from user to text and we will display the transcribed text on the chat app that we have built and then the same text is passed through to the large language model which takes care of responding to the text that the user has given us and the response from the large language model is then passed to text-to-speech where we actually convert the response back to speech and then we'll be playing the response from the LLM so that the user can hear that. In terms of the models for the speech to transcription, we'll be using the Whisper model from OpenAI. And for the large language model, we'll of course be going for Llama, which is open source, and we'll be using a simple Google API to convert the text into speech. So let's see how we can build each of these components together to finally arrive at the app. So for the user interface, we'll be using Streamlit, as they say, it's quite simple. All we have to do is one or two lines of code in order to just display some user interface. And like they say, it's the fastest way to build and share data apps. Because we are going to be running the models on a MacBook Pro, we need quantized models. And the best way to get them is through Olama. If you don't have Olama installed in your machine, you can go to the download page. So there are downloads available for Mac, Linux, and Windows. So because I'm on a Mac, I'm going to choose that. I'm going to download it. I've already downloaded it. And install it. It's a very simple, straightforward process. Once we have Olama, we can pull the model that we want to run using the command Olama run and the model name because we're going to be using a Llama 3.1 version and we are going to be using a 3 billion parameter, which is the smallest model available in Llama 3.1. And we're going to be using the 4 bit quantized version of that. And that itself is 4.7 gig. So please make sure that you have insufficient disk space to download 4.7 gig of the model. So if the download went fine you should be able to do olama run llama 3.1 and you should be able to ask any questions and you should be able to interact with the model as we can see here now that we've got olama out of the way you can start looking into coding the app there are mainly three files that i have written one is the requirements.txt and the other one is ai.py which is to deal with the chatbot and you know text to speech and also to transcribe the audio and then there's app.py which is to do with the user interface mainly to do with streamlit so let's start with requirements.txt we've got streamlit as i said is mainly for user interface the audio recorder is to do with recording the voice input from the user and then we've got obviously Langchain and Langchain community and we've got Olama which is to load the quantized model because we are working on a MacBook and then we've got Torch and Transformers library to deal with the models and to deal with the LLM. Let's first start with the user interface stuff. So if we look at the user interface we've got this message at the top and then we have a bunch of messages following that and then on the left we have got this panel where we can choose the model that we'll be working with and then we have these two parameters which is the temperature and the max tokens so these are two sliders and this is a drop down we have this click to talk icon which the users can click and then talk to the app so we'll be importing streamlet as st and then we are setting the title as uh, loxa you know it's your local alexa obviously we have a session state variables so one is the messages we are initializing the messages as an empty list because there's nothing there in the list of chat and we we also have audio bytes, which is the input that the user talks by clicking on the mic icon. We have these three variables, which are also session state variables. One is the model and it's got 
the list of models which is currently is Llama 3.1 and Llama 3.2 latest and then we have the temperature and the max tokens as sliders and the model is a select box we also have the chain which is a session state variable and we are initializing using the chatbot class from the ai.py i will walk you through the chatbot class when we get to the ai.py but for now we just initialize the chatbot and then we create the chain and then store it in the streamlit session state once we initialize this whenever we get uh, audio input from the user which is the audio bytes we create a pipeline in order to process the input that we receive from the user so it will be a speech recognition pipeline using the whisper large v3 turbo model so that pipeline which consists of the whisper speech recognition model is passed to the transcribe audio function which is to process the speech from the user and the transcript that we receive after transcribing is then added to the session messages so basically we are transcribing the audio we are receiving from the user and then we are appending it to the list of messages that are displayed in the user interface so once we display the transcribed message in the user interface we will be passing the same transcript to the chain which is nothing but the LLM that we created remember we created the chain using the chatbot and that chatbot has got the LLM and these two are the parameters the max token and the temp so we are going to pass the transcript to the LLM in order to be processed and we get the response and we convert the response into speech back again in order to be spoken out loud so we use the text-to-speech function to convert the response back to speech and that is what we hear back when we actually use the app so with that information about the user interface let's move on to ai.py the most important class in ai.py is uh, chatbot we basically have init function to initialize the class so we'll be passing the model the parameters which are the temperature and the max token and we also got a prompt template for which we'll be using the chat prompt template from Langchain prompts. We'll be using the chat prompt template and we'll be passing the input variables, which are the contents and the messages. And for the message, obviously we are giving, you are a personal assistant named Loxa. Give short and concise answers in 50 words, but always provide a full sentence. So with that system message, we are initializing the prompt. And once we have the prompt, we also have to have some memory for conversational buffer for that we'll be using the conversational buffer from Langchain buffer memory and we are going to be initializing with these parameters which is the memory key chat memory which is the file chat memory history and also the input key which is the content so once we have initialized all those then the chatbot class is initialized whenever we want to use the chatbot we will be invoking the create chain function Function. so this will be the function that we are invoking when the chain is missing in the streamlit session state so it's the same create chain function all that we are doing is we are invoking the llm chain from langchain.chain.llm and we are creating the langchain by passing the llm the prompt and the memory that's all about it so basically all that we need to create the chain is the model and the prompt and the memory so we pass that to create the chain and we return the chain from this function so the next important functionality is to transcribe the audio whenever the user talks so we get the audio bytes as input and we first open a file in which the input audio needs to be stored and we first stored it just in case we don't want to lose it so after storing it if the file is existing we are going to try to pass the audio to the pipeline and the pipeline is going to return the transcript to us so what is that pipeline the pipeline is the pipeline that we created here in the app so it's the speech recognition pipeline using the whisper open ai using the open ai's whisper model so this model is loaded as a float 16 model instead of being a quantized model but that seems to be fine because it's a speech recognition model and it's much smaller than the llms and also if we have a device which is cuda as in like like if you have a GPU machine, it's well and good. It seems to run fast. But if you don't have it, then we're going to be running it on the CPU. 
So we transcribe using that pipeline and the result of the transcript is going to be uh, returned from the transcribe audio function. And the third and the last one is the text to speech function. For that, we are going to be using Google text to speech, which is the uh, GTTS. And it's pretty straightforward. All that we're going to do is we're going to pass the text and we're going to say the language is English. And then we're going to be giving an output file in which the speech needs to be stored after it's been converted from text to speech. And finally, we're going to play the file that's been stored. But if it's a Mac system, then we probably have to use AF Play. But on Ubuntu, I found that A Play seems to work. So that is how we will actually be playing back what are the response that we get from the LLM. We'll be converting the text to speech and we will be playing it out straight away so that the user can hear back. And that's pretty much it, guys. So it's less than 100 lines of code, as we can see. It's just 81 lines and it does all the magic for us and we are able to receive a speech input from the user we are able to transcribe it we are able to pass it to an llm and get a response from an llm and finally again convert the text back to speech and then play it back to the user so that's pretty much alexa running on your local machine with less than 80 lines of code obviously this is just a basic implementation so it can be made much more sophisticated the models can be improved a lot and we can really have something that's uh, close to real time but on the mac machine it takes eight to ten seconds to respond to each of the query that we get from the user and on a gpu machine it's taking around two seconds so the repository is available publicly on github and it's on mit license so you guys can download the code play around with it and then modify it for your use cases so with that i'm done with this one and thanks so much for your attention i'll see you in my next until then take care